Hey guys, Justin here from Temco Industrial Power and today I'm going to do a general overview on a WEG magnetic motor starter. I'll show you a little bit about them, how they, what they are, how they work, and uh, what kind of applications you might use them in. So in a previous video I had done a product review here, the WEG PESW series magnetic motor starters. Uh, in this video here, in response to a couple of questions we've gotten here, I'm going to go into a little bit more depth as to how these work and what they're used for. This guy here is a, is a magnetic motor starter, uh, sometimes called a mag starter. Inside of it, you've got a couple of basic components here. On top here, we have what's called a contactor. A uh, contactor is a specially designed relay that uh, is it's designed to switch higher currents. Um, now, a relay is a, an electromechanical device that on the bottom, you can't really see it here, but there's a coil of wire and you can feed that uh, a fairly low current signal, but it generates a magnetic field that pulls down on the contacts in the top of this unit here. And these contacts have the pads on them that are rated to switch the high amperages. The reason you would use something like this is to keep the high amperage that would have to flow through to your motor you want to keep that out of your, you know, your user interface panel. You know, you don't want 30 amps or something like that flowing behind the button that your user is putting their hand on every time they start the machine. You'd much rather have that safely tucked away uh, inside something where they're only interfacing a very small amount of current, so there's not a whole lot of danger there. Uh, the other reason for using that besides safety is to be able to switch a very large amperage signal with something small that can't handle it. So for example, if you have a, a pressure switch or a float switch, say on a well or on a, on a you know, a pump or a, a stock tank or something like that, um, generally those switches are only rated up to maybe an amp. But you may be powering a motor that's going to draw, you know, 20, 30 amps. So you need some way to switch that current. And that's exactly what a contactor is for. In addition to a contactor, what makes a motor starter actually work the way it does is you have this. This is called the thermal overload, or it's often referred to as the heaters. Now, at, after the current passes through the contactor when it's turned on, it now has to go through these heaters before it can get to the motor. And these, these consist of some bimetallic strips that are, are adjustable here as to how, when they trip. But when you draw too much current, across these strips, uh, they will actually flex up and break contact, which will pull this relay, this contactor, out of the circuit. So it's an additional overload protection for your motor here. Um, so say you have, you know, you got fuses upstream, power coming in here, and your motor bogs down and starts to try and draw too much current. Um, you'll, you can reset, you know, you'll pop this device, which is nice and resettable, and not necessarily blow the fuses upstream there. Now, additionally, in here, on this particular model, there's two switches, and they're built in right here. And that's for the start and the stop buttons. You can see inside the lid here, you've got a couple of uh, actuator rods that when you push the buttons, come down and press these switches that are built in on this unit here. Uh, there's another flavor of mag starter here that comes without the start button here. So you can see it's just got stop reset. And if we look inside that one, here, you can see uh, the buttons aren't present, they're missing. Now what you would use this style starter for here, primarily, is if you were wiring it up where you had something externally controlling the device. So it's either something where, as soon as power is applied, you want the device to come on, or you've got an external trigger like a float switch or a pressure switch or, or even a limit switch or something like that where you want that particular switch to be operating your machinery. This one here with the built-in switches is uh, more ideal for something where you actually have a real person that's going to operate the equipment. Now you can wire these for automated use like say for on a compressor or something like that if you happen to have one with the start stop buttons. Uh, there's no reason you can't rewire this one to act like this one. And uh, vice versa, you can wire uh, external buttons to this starter that uh, allow an operator, you know, a human operator, to, to start and stop the machinery, uh, maybe from a remote location. So if you have something where 
you've got a piece of equipment, say, in, a, in an equipment room, but the operator needs to start or stop that particular piece of equipment from, uh, you know, down the hall somewhere, um, you could wire up remote buttons and then just use the one that doesn't have any buttons on it uh, at the remote location there. Now, if you found this video helpful, uh, please go ahead and like and subscribe down below here. Um, I do these, I do two, two videos a week on industrial electrical power products that Temco sells here. Um, so if you subscribe, you'll be uh, up to date on all the information that I put out here. Um, also, like us on Facebook, we've got that up now. And if you have any questions or comments, like this video here has spawned from a couple of questions that we got, um, please comment either in the comments on any of my videos or on our Facebook. Just go ahead and give us a call, give us comments, and uh, I'll get back to you. Thanks, guys.